this QI Phase 10 recap. I did a pretty long video at my Phase 10 collection. Um, this is going to be a recap, and it's not going to be quite as detailed, um, but if you don't want to watch the full video, this should give you a pretty idea of what we covered in Phase 10. Phase 10 is the end of our uh, settlement construction. Uh, the, like the actual practical part of the settlement is completed at this point. Um, we're going to keep adding archer arches, victory towers, things like that, but the mechanical part of the settlement is completed at phase 10. Um, what you're looking at now is following my 11th phase, so my, my 10th collection. Um, I didn't record that. I'm not really even going to talk about that a whole lot. I do want to recap phase 10, though, because that is the the end goal for, for all the phases that I've presented to you guys. So if you start from phase 0, uh, phase 10 would would be your 10th collection. I started from phase one, so phase 10 was my ninth collection. Um, at the beginning of phase 10, we had a three by three goods building planted down here in anticipation of buying expansion number eight, um, with primarily with our collection from phase 10, but I left enough resources in the bar after phase nine in order to cover the difference. So the goal of uh, phase 10 was to plant expansion number eight, which is the last expansion that we need structurally for the city, um, and then arch number five. Um, I chose to buy this expansion with shards instead of goods, and rerouted the goods from this, that I, or the resources that I saved off the goods building, I rerouted that to the farm number two and villa number one. Um, this is the first thing that I wanna talk about is shard consumption, okay? So we all start with 500, I bought 100 um, during phase 10 just to uh, rush rush something and then I bought a thousand this morning just to do some extra actions this is optional but we are going to include that in our math just so we can figure out if we have a sustainable shard consumption rate um, so originally I bought the 100 plus 150 in expansions and that's I was planning to do this one with goods we chose to do it with shards instead so we're going to include that in the shard consumption. Uh, 100 shards on obstacles. 300 shards on rushing, but I did rush uh, the construction of farm in phase 10. So that brings us to 350 shards spent on rushes. I've spent 835 on actions. Oops. Uh, plus the 530 that I currently have available, uh, still left over, is a grand total of 2,265 shards that we've either sp spent or are able to spend, right? 2,265, remember this number. So, out of the 2,265 that we've spent or had available to spend, 1600 of those are accounted for from either what we started with or what we bought throughout the season meaning that 650 ish are coming from the map itself so this these are getting generated just from playing the game okay i do periodically spend diamonds on this um, i don't go crazy i'm pretty cheap with qi but i do occasionally throw some diamonds at it um i so normally Normally, I am not able to buy my first expansion with goods. Um, I have some ascended buildings in my city currently, so I had surplus of goods to start the settlement. Normally, I do not have that ability, so I normally spend the same 450 on expansions that I did this season. Um, I was kind of hoping to get this one as a freebie, but it ended up actually working out that I spent the shards that I normally would. I think that's a little more accurate to the, to the system that I normally use. Um, and then I rush the first goods building for 25 in order to get expansion number four. So on a typical season, I spend 475 on city construction. And after that, I don't rush the construction of anything. I don't rush farms or villas. I don't rush the construction. And I definitely don't rush the production of those. I did it a handful of times in these, in this series of videos, mostly just to complete the video though, because of the stuff that I was rushing was like an arch or an archery camp or a ballista things that I would normally not rush because I build them at the tail end of a collection. Um, so I have enough, I'm not going to delete my math quite yet. 
um, but I have enough resources to run one cycle of Legionnaire. Uh, but I, I actually want to run two cycles, so I'm going to leave it planted, run another cycle or two off of the f beginning of my next collection, and then delete it and make the changes that I'm trying to make. So there's really no reason to rush it. I don't care if it's an hour behind, I could run that cycle anytime I want, but I still want to run one more at the beginning of next round. Make sense? So throughout the season, rushing is just not a thing that I do, and my system is not dependent on that. If you choose to do that, cool, you'll be ahead of the game. But my system really does not depend on that. So the the 350 that I've spent on rushing uh, kind of offsets the the additional cost that I've spent on actions. Does that make sense? In a normal season, in the old system at least, I would only spend the 450 shards per day uh, for actions at the absolute most. And if you get the pass, you're recuperating that as you as you spend them. So you basically break even on the action expense. Long story short, in a normal season, at the beginning of the season, Inno gives you 500 shards to start with, right? But in a normal season, you have to uh, generate, you have to save those shards from the leftover of your last season in order to start the next. Um, in other words, you'll start with whatever you have available. So in a normal season, I would not be rushing these buildings. I've generated 665 from the map. I've spent 475 on city construction. Um, so hypothetically, if I hadn't bought anything or rushed anything beyond the 475 that I that I typically do, I would be I would have around 200 shards uh, left over hypothetically, and six days left to participate in the map. So if I've generated 200 shards in five days, pretty reasonable assumption that I can generate the other 300 I need in the next six days in order to cover the cost of the 475 to start the next season. Does that make sense? Um, if you guys choose to buy extra shards or extra actions, that's totally your prerogative, but I don't want to present a system uh, to the FOE community that, that depends on that strategy because that's not in the budget for some people. So I don't want to present a city design that demands you spend 2,000 diamonds every season because it's not going to apply for some people. You can, you can use my system as a zero diamond spender and get to this point on your 11th phase. I was able to do it on my 10th phase, but you can get to this point for free on your 11th phase. So that, that sums up the shard thing. Um, you can buy them if you want, but you don't need them. Uh, Legionnaire, since we're on that topic, I normally wouldn't have all three military buildings planted. Um, and, and usually for most of the season, it's just the archer. Towards the tail end, I will leave the ballista planted, but just disconnected. Uh, for a couple cycles. Normally would not have all three, but it worked out on this collection. Um, I did want to run a couple repetitions of Legionnaire. You only need like 30, and you're you're pretty decent on the map. So I did want to run a couple cycles of that before I uh, convert this group right here, this pair of house and 3x4, into, a, into farm number 3. And that's where that farm number 3 has been designated to go. So I do want to get a couple Legionnaire out of that before I before I plant the farm. But on that note, um, the archer has been permanently disconnected since I think phase two is when we built it, maybe phase one even, um, has been permanently connected through every phase of this series. And the there's a couple benefits to that. Number one, if if we didn't have a location for it and we just deleted a tile house, planted the, the archer, got some troops, deleted the archer, replaced with a tile house, if you repeat that process throughout all 10 phases, you end up losing around 80,000 in coin, um, as as well as the supplies that it takes to print the ballista, or the archer camp, excuse me. Um, so huge waste of resources. Um, having the archer permanently plugged into a road instead of a, a tile house will cost you around 100,000 in coin over the 10 phases. So having this permanently disconnected archer gives us the ability... Um, to not even delete anything, we can actually just shuffle roads. We don't even have to delete the roads. We can just shuffle the roads, print Archer whenever we want, move it back into its little pocket, replace our roads, and go about our collection. And having that ability at every single phase is a huge resource. Uh, ultimately, the, the Archer concept comes down to use of space. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but let's count up our empty tiles right now. Um, I've got one, two on the back side, one, two, 
one, two. This will be permanently empty space in my city. There's some empty space right here that will get replaced with the uh, footprint of a farm. One, two, and then four. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight empty squares, effectively. We're going to disregard these four. Um, but effectively, eight empty squares just in the normal footprint of the city. Uh, these two empty squares are actually kind of purposeful for the ability to slide this archer into place. These group of four empty squares, um, this, remember, expansion number eight is flex space. So right now we have a tailor in there, but if we need to delete that to run Ballista at some point um, and then replace with a, with a butcher, we'll have four empty squares on the back. If we need to delete the butcher and plant an amphitheater to... Uh, manipulate happiness a little bit for a collection all four of those will be consumed um so disregard the four empty squares on this on this tile because depending on what we're doing on each collection that may be used or maybe in a different location right so picking piggybacking off the amphitheater idea um there's there's the school of thought that if you can plant a farm or a villa early on you're going to be ahead of the game the reality is you won't get the collection of that on the upcoming collection unless you actually rush the construction of the building itself. And the, the second problem is if you're spending all of those resources on the elevated buildings, you're still working with a small city grid. So that farm is taking up potentially one fifth of your city space. Um, and if, if it isn't, if the construction isn't rushed, you're not getting the return on that investment in the upcoming collection. And then all of your available resources are going to amphitheater. So you end up with a, a really big farm that you can't collect. Uh, half of your city is filled with amphitheater to maintain the happiness that you need to collect the four tile houses that you've been able to collect. Um, versus planning the arch at opening, doing the farm in the end game, where my collections now are about 350,000 of each resource. So I can do a farm, two villa, or a a villa and an arch, uh, plus some uh, troop combinations. If you have 350000 to play with, planning the farm is costs you nothing, essentially. Like, you don't even notice it. Um, and there's no... You don't need to rush it, because at the next collection, even deleting a butcher, planning a farm in its place, we're not going to miss the 10,000 supplies out of the 350. Does that make sense? Overall, just a lot more sustainable if we do the arches first and then the farm at the end of the, um, towards the end game, right? Um, so, in terms of expansions, this is topic number four, expansions. Expansions one, two, three, four, and five. Um, so we start off with this city grid, right? There's one expansion, two expansion, three expansion, four expansion, and then five expansion up here. One, two, three, four, five. These five expansions are uh, integral to the to this system and this pattern, and you do need those five expansions uh, in order to make this system work. And from here, you'll always have the two tailor on this one side, a farm in the bottom right, and then a pair of farm and arch in the top right. Um, and then your housing coming off your, your town hall here. You always need those those five expansions. I'm going to come back to where they might be located, um, but for now, just remember you need those five expansions. The purpose of expansion number six is always to add a pair of arch and house. And this is to increase population in order to plant more expensive buildings, like Taylor or Farm that are consuming population. So we need the population. We also need the coin from the house, and then we need the happiness to match that. So the purpose of expansion number six is always coin and happiness. The purpose of expansion number seven is always supplies. So ideally farm number three, but depending on the city uh, grid that you're working with, you might end up with uh, tailor number nine or ten, and then a couple extra houses as well, depending on where your obstacles are. Um, so coin and happiness, supplies, and then purchase. purpose of expansion number eight is flex space that we can use uh permanently to run either a butcher if we if we need the supplies slide a ballista in there run a couple pairs of tile houses if we need more coin for the upcoming collection whatever your city needs we can do in this eighth expansion for flex space 
So expansions, uh, the first five expansions are, are always going to have the same pattern. Uh, farm, farm, tailor, tailor, arch, arch, butcher, 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 housing, uh, not butcher, tailor, sorry, uh, tailor, 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 housing, same pattern uh, every single time. The, the only variable here, um, so for expansion six, seven, and eight, the variable is going to be where your obstacles are. And you'll just have to get creative with that. Um, I'll come back to that and give you some criteria for what to look for. But you'll have to get creative with that. Um, for now, the, the first five expansions are critical, right? But they don't necessarily have to be on this right side. If your right side is covered in obstacles, you can mirror your town hall layout. So you would, instead of shifting your town hall straight up, you'd shift it up and over. Run your pair of tailor off of the left side with your two farms right we have it on the right side now but if your expansions are not favorable on this side you can mirror your town hall left to right duplicate the same pattern and then use this expansion for number five which is free of obstacles right by the same token you can actually mirror your uh, your town hall uh, up and down so hypothetically let's say that this entire uh, group was free of obstacles. I could mirror my town hall vertically, shift it down two more, and run this pattern of tailor and house behind the town hall. Make sense? So there's a there's a lot of different ways. there's a lot of different ways to do that. Where yes, ultimately we need we need this pattern ultimately, but we can set up that pattern here, right? Or we could flip it and set that pattern up here. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, so you've just got to get creative with where your, your obstacles are, but you can copy this entire layout with the same five expansions uh, regardless. So for expansions six, seven, and eight, the criteria is pretty simple. Um, obviously, we're looking for expansions that do not have obstacles. Um, I cleared three obstacles, and the last one that I cleared was 75 shards. So I really don't want to find out what a fourth obstacle would, would cost to clear. So there's three criteria that we're looking at, two criteria, sorry, uh, that we're looking at for expansion placement is uh, obstacle-free, first of all, but also connected off of a road. So we have road possibilities off the left side of the town hall. Um, technically, we have a single piece of road here normally. In this scenario, it drops down to, but we always have a single piece of road here and a single piece of road here. So you can actually expand off the right on those locations, as well as uh, vertical down and vertical up off those locations. So look for expansions uh, in that pattern. We do have a road coming down here to connect this tailor. I would not look for expansions in this location, though. Um, this, this road is meant to connect a full-size building. It's not designed to run through the system to connect something below it. So I would ignore this expansion. Um, so from here, rotate this image left, right, up, down, wherever you want, and map out the expansions that, that will be coming off of these road legs. Any additional expansions that we plant after this are just going to be empty squares with no obstacles for the purpose of arch and tower. Okay, so that covers the expansions. So just to recap, um, topic number one is shard consumption, which we figured out is pretty reasonable. Um, I did actually the most, most of the actions that I've bought or spent uh, are coming, or most of the shards that I've bought or spent are going towards actions, not city design. Um, so that's totally your prerogative, but you can build this city design with the exact same amount of shards that you start with. And you can maintain that without buying extra actions just by participating in the map. So number one is shards. We've covered that. Number two is use of space. And there's a few ingredients there. It's mostly just the road layout. And my system is super efficient. Um, but side note number one is archer. Just having that archer permanently planted and making a home for it. And then the trade-off between arch early on, which saves a ton of space versus farm early on, which hopefully is going to increase your supply production, but it just doesn't work out like that. Um, so space consumption. Um, we're going to end up with eight empty squares, like I said, and towards the end we're going to want some victory towers anyways, so that works out. Um, topic number three is expansion placement. Um, you do need the five to make this pattern work, 
but 6, 7, and 8 can be located in any number of different places if you rotate your city to match the obstacles that you're working with on that, on that particular season. Um, so that covers basically the main discussion points from Phase 10. Uh, the mechanics of Phase 10 was simple. Like I said, just plant the one farm, the one villa. Um, after Phase 11, so my 10th collection this morning, I planted uh, two more villa, and then I ran... Uh, so I actually donated like 50 troops this morning, and then I ran another cycle of Archer, um, and then one Ballista as well. So uh, basically my entire 11th or 10th collection went to upgrading a few more houses in the villa, um, and then some troops. Arch number 5 was planted in phase 10. Arch number 5 is giving us enough happiness. Um, so we, yeah, we currently have 1075. After these, villa cook will be down to 600-ish, which still gives us enough happiness to delete uh, two, two cottages in a or three cottages and replace with two villa and a tile house that we would have to delete in between collections or plant an amphitheater over here until we get arch number six, whatever. Um, but we have enough happiness left over to plant at least two more villas with what we have currently. Um, goal for collection number 11, so phase 12 for me, and again, I'm not going to record these, but just so you guys know what what's coming. Um, uh, purpose of collection 11 is to use basically the entire collection to run all the ballista that I'll probably need throughout the rest of the season. Uh, so like a couple hundred of them. Um, delete the ballista and then plant arch number six in that location. So I don't even need to get another expansion at that point. Um, it's already there. I've just got to finish running the ballista to get it. Um, and arch number six will give us enough happiness to um, upgrade, delete three more cottages and replace with three more villa after that. Um, so at this point we're will be up to uh, like two farms and eight villa, uh, eight tailor, handful of cottages, and then six arches. This will probably be uh, it's Tuesday, Tuesday mid-morning for me now. We'll probably be at this point by Thursday morning. Um, collection at that point is around 400,000 of each resource. Let's do the math real quick. Yeah, so, uh, not exact number, but roughly 410k coin, um, and then 380k supply, about 380, sorry, supply, roughly. I'm not going to do the exact math, but that's a pretty good estimate. Um, and then, after we're done with Legionnaire, in this group, we'll delete the cottage. It hurts a little bit to delete cottages, but at this point, we're into the end game, so... It served its purpose, and we're done with that. Um, build the farm, and then upgrade our last few cottages into villa. So pretty comfortable around uh, 450k of each resource. And this might vary depending on where your expansions land. So if you don't get a third farm, in other words, but you end up with a tailor and a butcher, and then an extra house, you might have an imbalance on the coin side where you're getting 480k coin, but only 420k supplies. Right? Um, but for the most part, pretty pretty even in the mid-400s range. The, the, the point of all this, though, is that the fundamental problem with building a farm or a villa early on at the expense of using those resources to buy expansions is that you end up with a, with a really small grid, city grid, and even though you're... Uh, the buildings that you have planted are potentially all arches, all villa, and all farms. That's great, but it's on a really small footprint. So if you start off with the cheap buildings and use your resources to buy expansions, you can kind of create a snowball effect um, to where we're not spending resources, right? Like we're not spending 200,000 coin to buy a farm. We can plant a butcher for only 2,500 coin and just plant a ton of butchers, right? And it creates a snowball effect where you can build this city grid just from the, the resources that you're getting off of cheap buildings. And then once you run out of city grids to plant, which in this case is expansion number eight, once we run out of the, the expansions that we need, we can start rerouting those resources into upgrading um, butchers into villa, or butchers into farms, houses into villa, etc. Uh, but we're doing it on a much bigger scale. So we're taking that, you know, the potential 200,000 of each resource that you would get, 
with a with a farm and a couple villa on a small grid we're taking that we're scaling it up at least twice right so from here once we get into a difficulty level 10 11 12 on the map we'll be able to print a uh, 100 ballista at every collection and you're going to run out of actions before you run out of troops even if you're killing them seven at seven at a time you're only good for uh 30 30 auto battles every day and assuming that some of those uh, battles you're paired against art or the horses where you're using archers uh your worst case scenario you're burning up 100 ballista a day uh, absolute worst case scenario but you have the ability to reprint 100 a day from your collection does that make sense all right so that wraps up the the recap of phase 10 this is still a pretty long video but it was a little bit shorter than than the actual phase 10 uh, watch one or the other if you guys want the short version this will probably get you what you need uh, in terms of information but if you do want to understand some more detail probably watch the full uh, phase 10 thing instead i've said it before but i'll say it again here um, proofs in the pudding if you guys have a system that you prefer that you think is better than mine uh, please send it to me please post a video find me on discord uh, show me how you're doing it because this isn't an ego thing to me um, like i don't have anything to prove to you guys I just want to help people get good at this part of the game because I know that it is frustrating for some people. So if I can help you get good at it, that's my only goal. If you have a better way of doing it, please educate me because I want to be better as well. Um, this is the system that works for me though. Um, and uh, it's not necessarily like I can't send you a screenshot of this layout and say build this, right? Because variables, we've talked about that before. There's a lot of variables in terms of what you start with in resources what you get from the map where your obstacles are so you may not end up with this layout every season right but the principle is the same in every season so that's a wrap um i will do i'm probably going to do some time lapses of my upcoming collections just so you guys can get a feel for what i'm doing with those resources i'm not really going to make a video or explain anything verbally as i go but i'll just make a time lapse of the collection and what i do with it um, but that's it for the Phase 10 recap. Hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this little series. Phase 10 is the conclusion of the tutorial. And the rest of that, I, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this little series. All right. Talk later. Bye.